Sports Talk with Player Agent 3. My next guest is no stranger to the show. A former ACC guard who probably, nah, I'm not going to say probably, but has one of the sweetest strokes, sweetest basketball strokes from Raleigh, North Carolina. My little big brother, Coach Shawan Robinson. What's up, man? Glad to be back. Um, I'm excited to do the show again. I'll be a little bit more prepared this time. Yeah, man. It's it's, it's only right, man, that, that I you know bring you back on the show, man, because you, you definitely got to gotta give up the goods this time. So how have you been? Doing good. Um, still playing when I can. Uh, my team are five and four right now. Probably very well could be seven and one. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know we we we're a brand new team. You know we lost a big piece last year in Justin McCoy, who's doing playing pretty well at Virginia right now. And we're just trying to find out. We got to figure out how to win. So we've lost a couple that maybe we shouldn't have, but you know things are looking up and up for us. Okay, so you you grew up, man. You you grew up in a a, a basketball family. Your pops, um, Coach Darrell Robinson, um, Hall of Fame player, Appalachian State University, Jamal Robinson, University of Virginia, Miami Heat as well. What was it like growing growing up in your household, man? You know, talk about that a little bit. No, nah, it's kind of crazy. Um, basketball was never put on me. You know, my dad brought me to the gym with him, and it's something that I always love to do. You know, having you know Jamal going and watching his games at UVA and when they came in the area, Mm-hmm. You know, my dad played for Bobby. He was still at Georgia Tech when I was growing up. So being able to go to those games and see high-level basketball um, was something that, you know, I guess at the time I took for granted, but it was it was something that I was around. It was mm-hmm. something that I wanted to do. Uh, it was never forced upon me. I can tell you in my, in my 36 years, I've probably worked out one-on-one with my dad on 10, 12 times. Wow. Um, but I was always playing. He always had me in the gym. Mm-hmm. Playing, playing mm-hmm. pickup. I was playing pickup with his friends when I was 14, 15. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever he was playing pickup and I wasn't old enough, I was on the sideline playing with you know his friends' kids. So it's just something that I, I've loved. It was never, it was never mm-hmm. forced upon me. It wasn't any uh, he got game moments. <laughs> um, I played for him at 10. You know he started the AU team because he <laughs> he didn't want me to build bad habits. Uh-huh. Um, and growing up as his, when he was coaching and I was his player, there were times where we butted heads. But I believe it's the reason why we're best friends now, and he's on my bench now. Mm-hmm. You know, on the in the background, kind of telling me what to do. Right. Sometimes I go with it, sometimes I don't. But he's always been that common influence, you know, since I've been coaching. Now, your, your guy, he's I mean, your your dad, he's a uh, he's a New York City native. Yeah. Growing up, did he try to instill toughness? You know, being that you know New York New York players are considered to be tough. Did he try to instill any toughness in you, being that you grew up here in the South? Oh, for sure. Um, I grew up playing in the rec leagues at Green Road and Newark mm-hmm. Exchange, and I guess I was kind of good for those leagues, and he mm-hmm. knew there was another side of Raleigh that I needed to see. Right. So then he put me in the Lions Park League. Um, one thing he couldn't stand was a scared player, um, and if there were times where I showed that, he let me know it. Uh-huh. And I think by the time I was a high school kid, I wasn't afraid of anybody. Um, I was tough. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't anything a college coach could say to me that he hadn't already said. And I think what made our player-coach relationship special was he would get on me, but I always knew he was with me. Yeah. So and I think and I think that's what I try to instill in my guys. Like the ones I get on are the ones that I expect the most from, and Mm -hmm. they know that they're gonna get yelled at, but they know that they're going right back. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be hard on a kid that ain't got it. And I think that's something that right. I, I knew my dad knew I had it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whatever it was, you know, I had it. So yeah, so so being that basketball wasn't forced upon you growing up, did you know did did you well not know, but did you kind of feel like basketball would be your ticket, you know, to to getting a, a, a free education and, and you know, eventually having a career in basketball? You know, it's something I never thought about. Um, I, I am blessed. I come from a you know two parent household. Mm-hmm. You know, we had everything we needed, most of the things we wanted. I never thought of it as a ticket, man. I just love the game. Like even mm-hmm. to this day, like I'm trying to find ways to play pickup. You know, I play with my kids in practice, so I never saw it. I never, I never felt I needed a ticket. Mm-hmm. You know, I did it because I loved it. Right. Um, and it's the purity. Now, I always grew up wanting to be a college basketball player. I really think if I had to look further than that, maybe I would have taken it a little bit further. 
But the day I signed with Clemson and played in the ACC, you know, for me that was that was a dream come true. I never really looked at signing an NBA contract. Uh huh. So yeah. I mean, who knows if if that would have been in my if that would have been in my you know my my goals or something that I said. Mm -hmm. I I don't see why I wouldn't have been able to achieve that. Yeah, I you know I kind of knew my, I I kind of knew your path. Well, I think you were around six years old. Um, you would follow us to all of our AAU tournament. Your dad was was our coach. Um, did you know back in those days? Did you watch you know some of the guys that he coached, such as myself? Um, and did did that give you any inspiration as you know wanting to do this basketball thing? I mean, watching guys like you. Mm -hmm. Um, watching guys like Corey, watching guy, Corey Tabor, watching guys like Graham Bunn, um, then guys at least were like Greg Poole and Tyrone Dozier and Trey mm -hmm. Rayleigh, and then even the guys that they played against like Tally Powell, I think he's a Raleigh legend that gets that gets um, skimmed over just because I'm not sure where Tally ended up after, after he left Millbrook, but I remember watching him and thinking he was good. But no, watching you guys play... Um, you know, you always treated me like a little brother. Mm -hmm. um, and, and all my dad's players treated me like little brothers. So, I mean, for me, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, it, you know, just in my path, but I just knew what good basketball looked like. And then watching, right. and I remember shots, I remember a shot, a game, I don't know if it was a game winner, but I know it was a buzzer beater that yeah. you from one of the corners. Yeah. I don't remember <laughs> where we were, but that's something that, that stands out to me, you know, that, that I'll, I'll never forget. So, you know, play Asian three head game too. Yeah. Tell, say it again. <laughs> no, man, but um, you uh, take me to, okay, Leesville High School. You played at Leesville High School. You played with some Division One players, man. Um, how, how was that experience? Um, when we got to my junior, my sophomore, junior year, practices were harder than any game we'd ever play in. Mm -hmm. um, we, we played this game called Five on Five on Five, and we knew the teams. And we came in every day and we battled. You know, I battled guys like DJ Thompson, who's mm -hmm. in the Hall of Fame at App. Um, guys like uh, Anthony Richardson, who was a McDonald's All-American. And then it's another Raleigh legend that I, in my mind anyway, his name is Michael Land. Um, guys like that, and we okay. just battled in practice. He ended up, I think yeah. Michael Land went the Juco route and played at a D2, but he was by far one of the most talented guys I, I've ever played against or with. Okay. And he was just... He was just—he was phenomenal, and I think you know he kind of got lost, you know, in the in the basketball system, culture, whatever. But yeah, I mean, I played with some guys that are that could really do it, okay. and mm -hmm. you know, game prices were easy. I mean, games were easy because prices were so hard. Mm -hmm. Now, did you feel any pressure in high school being the coach's son? When I say pressure, I mean pressure from your teammates. Um, pressure from your, your pops you know you don't want to let him down uh you know teammates you know thinking oh he, he you know he has it made you know his, his dad is the coach how, how did you handle those situations um my freshman year i tried out like everybody else and my dad put me on jv so i might be the only player in america ever to play varsity in eighth grade because i went to a private school okay play varsity in eighth grade and then play jv in ninth and then Mm -hmm. Looking back, you know, having that conversation with my dad, the reason why he did that because he didn't want anybody to, he didn't want me to have to deal with the only reason why you're on varsity is because of your dad. Um, there were times in practice where he's he's harder on me so that people know I don't have it easy. Um, but I, I mean, the guys laugh at it now. They go back to moments in practice where my dad was, you know, was really hard on me or yeah. you know, kind of embarrassed me. But I mean, he wanted them to know that, you know, I had it. I didn't have it easy, mm -hmm. so I did. There was no pressure. I don't remember feeling any pressure that I, I had to live up to because of because he was my dad. I just went out and played and and, and did the best we could. Yeah. Did you? I mean, did your teammates? Um, do, do you do you feel like they felt some kind of way um, in, in certain situations? Nah, nah. I mean, the only the only time my only teammate that's ever brought it up was DJ Thompson. Okay. And like I said, he played it at. He remembers saying, I remember him telling me he was jealous that, you know, that the time I got to spend with my dad. Okay. You know, because, you know, he thought it was so cool that, you know, we got to spend all this time together because he, you know, he didn't, he didn't know his dad. He didn't have that relationship. Right. But as far as that, like, nah, I mean, not from anybody that ever, I shouldn't say that, <laughs> but I don't remember anybody, 
you know, making that, that the fact that that was my dad and that I got minutes uh, an issue because I think I was pretty, you know, I was pretty good. It wasn't a question on whether okay. I should be out there or not. All right. What was your moment in high school where you said, you know what? I can do this on the next level. I, I, I can do this on the division one level, division two level, division three level. What was your, I can do this moment? I don't know if I had one. I always felt like I could. Um, like I said, the guys I play with, the guys I play with AAU, you know, when I saw the, the attention that they were getting, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I should be next. And that's just kind of how it happened. Um, you know, I played AAU with like Charlotte Randolph, Eric Williams. And when I saw the attention that those guys were getting, I knew we, uh, the numbers that I had were more similar, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously they're big guys, but I don't know if I had a, you know, I'm gonna do this on the next level. I just always felt like I could. Okay, okay. Um, now, I'm sure people, the next thing I'm about to say, I'm sure people know now, but um, probably maybe a few years ago, there was some uh, some things floating around on the internet, Twitter, um, and maybe not a few years ago, but uh, you played um, at the Nike camp with LeBron James. Yeah, it was Adidas. And, uh, well, Adidas, okay. And if, if LeBron posted um, a short video on Twitter and I saw a number 45 <laughs> with the afro. I said, that's your one. Yeah. Because I remember, you know, you told me that, you know, you played on his team. Can you take me back to that moment playing with LeBron? Being that the person that he is right now, did you see that in him back when you guys were at the Adidas camp? Yeah. Um, I remember when they were calling out team names. And, you know, they were putting the guys on teams. I heard my name and then I heard his name. Um, and I remember a bunch of people like gasping. Uh -huh. And I, at the time, I didn't, know, I didn't know who he was. He was okay. a sophomore. I mean, I know he had a reputation, you know, by the way everybody reacted. But he was the, it was the first time that I ever played the game of basketball and found myself on the court kind of in awe sometimes. Uh -huh. Like just watching him, mm -hmm. like not, not moving or reacting to penetration. Um, I remember making this move. You know, after realizing who he was, I remember the third or fourth day of camp, making a move and hitting a shot, and he was like, that was a good move. And I was like, you really think so, man? <laughs> but, you know, you when you, you see a kid that young, you know, you wonder when he's going to fall off. And you're talking about 17 NBA years later. Am I right? Is that 17 years? Yeah, 17. 17, 17. NBA years later. Yeah. NBA years later, and he's still, you know, top, top two in the league, and he ain't number two. So... Um, did I see it then? Like, yeah, he was phenomenal. Did I think he'd be have be phenomenal for 17 years? No, yeah. I can't say I saw that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he was. It was. It was a great experience. And, and my kids at school see the. They, see they the, saw the, They saw the footage. Yeah, I get. Yeah. The, I get the. Um, and Coach Rod was at you. I'm like, yeah. And then yeah. I think I missed the layup. Yeah, I was about it. to ask you about that. It was a like, pass. Come on, man. Was, you gotta I, make that. I, 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 I missed the layup, <laughs> but you know, it's the only way I could be on one of the greatest footage I take. It. Yeah, that, that that that's definitely good stuff, man. You share with your share with your guys. Um, Clemson University. You signed to Clemson University, ACC school. Can you take me back to your thought process when you signed that letter to play at Clemson? I'm about to play in the ACC. It's about to get real. Yeah. What are you thinking? Um. No, nah, it was just it was something I was very proud of. I grew up in ACC country. I mean, I had a chance to go to Florida State, Wake, Clemson. Mm -hmm. I felt like Clemson was, you know, the best opportunity for me to play and win. You know, I've been winning my whole life. I never thought I'd go down there and lose. Um, but, I mean, it's just something I'm really proud of, you know. And at that moment when I signed it, I, you know, for me it was a dream come true. Um, my cut, welcome to the ACC moment helping, happened. In, we were 11-0. And we were hosting Duke, and I never forget Coach telling me to get in the game. And I had Duhan, and you know Duhan at the time was, you know, he was mm -hmm. McDonald's All American. They had just won a national championship, and you know I just never forget thinking in my mind like I'm guarding Duhan, and I ain't do too bad. I, I, I made a little move when he was guarding me, crossed him, I missed the jumper. But I mean, it's just something I'm incredibly proud of. It, it took a lot of hard work, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I was, 
you know, I was where I was supposed to be. Did you did you uh, seek out any advice from Jamal um, prior to your first game, or or even when you signed the letter to play at, at Clemson? Did you did you talk to uh, your cousin uh, Jamal Robinson, who played at the University of Virginia? Did you talk to him about um, his experience? Yeah, I mean, he was always he was always there um, when I was actually my first year at Clemson. He was in the G League or the D League at the time, mm-hmm. and. As a Greenville team, and whenever they would come down, he would make sure he got with me and we talked. Um, he, his advice to me was just always, you know, find a way to be you inside the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure you don't pass up shots, you know, and stay aggressive. And that's something that's always that's always that always stuck with me throughout you know my college days. Toughest, toughest arena to play in the ACC. I got to go with Maryland. Maryland. Oh wow. Maryland. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought you said Maryland. Yeah, Maryland was the toughest. I mean, Duke always felt like it was a bunch of nerds yelling at you, so it wasn't yeah. that intense. I mean, it was loud, it was it was choreographed, but Maryland, they was they were ruthless. Maryland, Maryland. Maryland University ruthless. of Maryland. Yeah, and they had okay. just come off the championship. Who did they have? Was it uh, Steve Blake, Blake was yeah. a senior? Um, Drew Nichols was a senior. Juan Dixon? Yeah. Uh, Juan Dixon was gone, because actually I think they had just won the championship. Okay. So I think Duke won it in yeah. 2001, and Maryland won it in 2002. Okay. I think that's right. So, yeah, they just come off a championship. So, and Steve Blake, to this day, you know, I was a freshman, he was a senior, but it was tough, far, man. By far the toughest check I've ever, I've ever I, had. That, to that was, I was going to ask you about who, who, who's the toughest person yeah, you had probably, to guard. Probably in the Steve Blake. He, he was tough. Probably Steve Blake. He was definitely tough. Cameron Indoor Stadium in the Ding Dong. Any nerves first time? Um, My first ACC. So, yeah, my first ACC road game was UNC. No, I was nervous. I don't say I was nervous. Um, but it was, and you know, it was one of those things. There's another moment where you play. Mm-hmm. It's an honor to play in here in an right. ACC game. Right, right. Yeah. Family, family with friends, me. family, friends. Uh, same with Duke. Um, I enjoy, I enjoyed those environments. Mm-hmm. I enjoy, I enjoyed the hostility. So. <laughs> now, so now, one the the thing that that I'm impressed the most um, about you, um, your college experience. Um, you know, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you were um, an academic All-American for four years at Clemson? Academic All-ACC, and I think it was All-Academic all All-American mm-hmm. once or twice, yeah. So how important was that for you as a as a person as well as a player to, to, to be able to do that? Um, I think it says a lot to be able to balance school and basketball. Um, school was always something that came pretty easy to me, but it was also something I knew that I, I had to do school in order to play. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always, I always tell my guys this too. Like part of being a good basketball player is being a good student, right. because the first thing a coach asks when they come on campus is, is what's the kid's GPA? And sometimes I, when I tell a kid that, when I tell a coach the kid's GPA, I don't hear from him again. Oh, yeah. So I mean, it just, just depends on the school and depends on the, you know, the mm-hmm. what they're looking for. But like for me, it's, it's an honor, you know. But it was something I worked at. It mm-hmm. was something I. You know, took pride in. Yeah. Now, I've I've, I've always known you to be a confident person and a, a definitely a confident uh, basketball player. Was there ever a time wh- when you were at Clemson that you felt like I don't belong on this level? No, nah, there was never a time where I felt like I didn't belong on this level. There was a time my sophomore year where I felt like I didn't belong on this team. Um, mm-hmm. My freshman year. My college, my my coach, Coach Shiat, was fired mm-hmm. or resigned. I don't know how it was worded, but he wasn't going to come back. <laughs> and uh, Coach Purnell came in. Yeah. And, you know, going through a coaching change is hard, especially on the kids that are recruited by somebody differently. Mm-hmm. And I just remember struggling a little bit. I wasn't sure if it was, I was missing shots or I was just uncomfortable. But I remember talking to my dad, who was at App State at the time. Uh-huh. And I remember going into the Purdue game. Like telling him, like, I think I want to leave. And he was like, we'll play this game, stick it out. You know, Christmas break's almost here. And then, you know, got a few games left and then we'll make a decision. And I remember going out against Purdue and having like 11 or 12 points and calling him after. And I was like, you know what, man, I think, you know, I think I'm going to be all right. Okay. And, and that was kind of, you know, I stuck. I, I mean, I've, I've never been a quitter. I've never, I felt like if I did that, I'd be quitting. So, you know, I stuck it out. Ended up having a decent career, averaging almost 10 points a game. And, you know, winning some games, but you know, I never felt like I did belong on that level. All right. So, you know, you, you, you had a solid career at Clemson. Um, you didn't have any eye popping numbers. So at what point at Clemson did you say, 
I, I can do this on a pro level. You know, whether it's whether it's whether it's overseas, whether it's the NBA. When did you say I'm, I'm going to go for it? I, I want to play. I want to play. I want to play pro basketball. It's one of those things where I just felt like this was coming next. Now mm-hmm. I didn't. I really didn't feel like I had a chance at the NBA. I, I honestly thought maybe I would be in somebody's camp, but I wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't great at any one thing. Mm-hmm. And you know, the NBA is full of guys that are great at something. Right. You know. So you know, looking back on it, you know, I didn't really think that. I, I figured I'd be in somebody's camp. You know, it didn't happen, and that's fine. But I mean, I ended up getting signed to to in, in England. You know, like in September after my senior year, and you know, won a chip, and you know, I figured I'd do it a lot longer, and probably could have, but you know, life happens, and All right, and you know, it is what it is. But I enjoyed the three years that I did it. Yeah. So when you were there um, in the countries that you played for, can you talk about the the difference um, in the culture? Um, and just, you know, just playing basketball on the pro level versus playing on the college level. It's a business, you know, whether you're whether you're scoring or you're not. If the team is winning, everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's just something that you have to learn and learn how to be a professional and get your shots up and get your work in. And, and sometimes you're being real professional in unprofessional situations where, you know, maybe money may be late or, you know, in college we flew everywhere. And all of a sudden you're on six, seven hour bus rides. Um, but I mean, I like I said, I enjoyed it. I, I experienced Germany, the Czech Republic, and England. And you know, as far as the culture being different, you know, basketball, the basketball culture is the same. You put your work in, you get the results. Right. You, win, you win, everybody's happy. You lose, regardless of what you're doing, somebody's unhappy. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was a great experience. You know, I always give you know try to give advice to guys that are going over. Right. But you know, it was, it was but, a good but, time. Did it humble you? Do you, uh-huh. do you feel like you were, you know what? This is not America. You know, the, the the food is different. The language is different. The people are different. No, I just adapted to wherever mm-hmm. I was. I just adapted to wherever I was and, and tried to make the most of it. You know, it was it was weird not being around any black folk. Mm-hmm. You, know, <laughs> you know, you're in, you know, not England so much, but definitely yeah. the Czech Republic. But mm-hmm. I mean, Nah, I never had that moment where I was super humble. Mm-hmm. So fast forward, um, you know, you, you you come back home, you know, you, you have a family now, you're coaching. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You know, your your, your pops, you know, he coached in college, coached in um, coached in high school. Do you feel like coaching w- was, was pretty much a, a natural progression for you? Yeah, I felt like it was what's next, regardless yeah. of how many years I had played. Um, you know, one of the craziest things for me, and it's you know something that I'm super proud of, is to be coach called Coach Rob. You know, whenever I'm mm-hmm. in the hallways and I hear Coach Rob, at first it was it was kind of a shock, but <laughs> just to hear it now, I know you say you're laughing. Yeah. But it's, you know, to be called Coach Rob is like one of the biggest honors that I've ever had in my life, man. And right. <laughs> just to be around the kids and my dad still be around. It's, I mean, like I said, I just it was what was next. Is it? Do you do you think it's you know, you're, you're you're the head coach. Do you think it's your your pops is sitting on the bench next to you? Do you think that's your way of giving something back to him? I don't know. I never thought about it that way. I I, I look at it more like he's giving something to me. Yeah. Um, nah, it's just you know after every big win and he's there and he tells me congrats. I'm like, man, you part of this too. I mean, it's just something that. You know, I'll cherish forever, you know, the experience of being able to sit with him on the bench. Yeah, six years, man. Six years, correct? At, yeah, this is my sixth year. At Panther Creek? Yeah. How is that? I mean, you talked about it a little earlier on the show, but how has it been for you, man, these these past six years? It's been awesome, man. Um, I've been blessed to have a Division One basketball player on my roster every year. Mm-hmm. Um, who, who, who are some of the guys that? All right, so my first year, I coached Juan Munoz who's at Longwood now. He's mm-hmm. a double medical red shirt towards ACL twice, but he's having a wow. dis- decent year this year. He's a junior. Um, he was a junior at the time when I coached, junior and senior years when I coached him. There's a guy, there was a guy that was a senior my first year. His name is AJ Morris. He's mm-hmm. at Alcorn State. Um, he's doing pretty well for them. They're not, they're not doing too well, but he's in their rotation. And then Justin McCoy, um, who's at UVA now. He led the state in scoring and rebounds last year and led us to the elite, to the Sweet 16. Sweet mm-hmm. 16 of the state. Okay. And then I got a couple guys this year that I, I expect to be Division One guys. Um, Dalen Berry, who's like okay. a 6'4", six, six, mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me a little bit of like Jeremy Lamb, like yeah. long, yeah. kind of smooth guard. And then I got a guy who just moved in from California. His name is Armand Muldrew. It's like a 6'2". You know, once he figures it out, he's going to be a problem. He's still kind of he's still kind of getting his feet wet, still getting comfortable with a bunch of new guys, but he can really go. Oh, okay. All right. That's, I mean, that's some good stuff, man. Um, you know, you're, you're definitely on, on the fast track. Um, now, being that you played pro ball, you played college, you have a father, pretty much, you know, did the same thing. How does that translate to your coaching style? Um, or, or does it? Or does it? No, it does. And I think the guys know that the situations that they've been in, I've been in too. Um, but it definitely does. I would like to think of myself as a player's coach. Um, and I just try to put them in situations that are successful and let them know that I'm with them. I believe in them. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing, because when you play for somebody who you're not sure believes in you, it's hard to play for that guy. So that's try to, that's something that, you know, being a basketball player, like I know that it's hard to play for somebody when they I know they don't believe in me. Right. So I, your confidence. Yeah. So I try to do all I can to inspire the ones that need to be inspired and try to rein back the ones that, you know, that ain't, that ain't yeah. there yet. Mm -hmm. But I'll let them know that once they get to where they where they need to be and the, the light is ultra green. Right. Right. Now, part in, in my estimation, part of uh, of being a coach, um, you're a coach, your father and you're a mentor. OK. Now you're, you're all these things to these kids, you know, wh whether you whether you believe it or not, some of these kids don't have a father at home. Was there any pressure on you or has there been any pressure on you to fulfill all these roles as a head coach? Um, Nah, I mean, you think about the things that I have to do. I don't, I don't see it as pressure. I see it as opportunity. You know, I do my best to, to say yes when I can. I've got to probably do a better job of learning to say no when I, mm -hmm. you know, when I have to. But, you know, men, mentors don't get to choose their mentees. You know, mm -hmm. if a kid, if I want, if I'm a mentor to a kid, he's got to come and ask me. You know, he, I, he choose the mentee chooses the mentor. So, I can't say I'm a mentor a kid if if he ain't gonna listen to me. So and that's something I take great pride in too. When a kid comes and asks me for advice, that means he really cares my opinion. He really thinks that I can help him. So as far as pressure, no, there's no pressure, mm -hmm. but it is something that is an honor. You know, it's an honor to be able to to be an influence. Right, right. Well, who are who, who is Coach Shawan Robinson as a coach? Who who are you? I'm a competitor. Like I want to win, but. At the same time, it's not the most important thing. You know, I feel like it's my job to teach life lessons through basketball, mm -hmm. whether it be facing adversity in class or on the court or in life and learning how to, you know, figure out what's next and figure out how we can solve, you know, winning this game or passing this class or, you know, going from a B to an A. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to be able to teach life lessons so that these, these young men can become men, you know, productive men. Yeah, that's that's definitely good stuff, man. Um, Training versus playing. How, how, how do you even those things out? Because there's a lot of skill development these days, man. And I think we talked about this before. You don't see the kids in the park anymore. Everybody has a trainer. Yeah. How do you balance those things out to get better? Well, I feel like you have to balance. I feel like you have to, whatever you, whoever you train with, if you're training by yourself and it's just you in an individual session, I think it's hard to learn how to apply what you've learned in that session. Uh -huh. I like when I see skill sessions and it's like four or five guys. So that way we, we learn how to do something and then we learn how to apply it in a three on three situation or we learn how to apply it in a five on five situation. Okay. So I think that, I think they go hand in hand. Um, but I think you have to do both. You can't just do one or the other. You can't just do one. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I, and this next topic, uh, the AAU and this whole thing about load management and I, I want to get your thoughts on this is AAU killing the game with this load management deal what do you think like are you asking me because guys are coming in to like high, uh, college hobble or NBA hobble because yeah they're playing, they're playing a lot of games year. yeah what, what are your thoughts on that because you you mean you you played AAU okay you played high school I mean you played a lot of basketball in your life well, I mean, what do you think about this 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 term load management? I think it's I, I, it'd have been tough for me to, to sit out a game where I'm healthy because you know someone's telling me they want me to rest. I mean, I teach their own. 
to each their own. I mean, personally, if if it was a game, I was going to be there. I remember playing in Goob's tournament. We mm-hmm. playing four or five games, and I wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. You know, because I was playing college ball. I can say that now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, playing in AAU tournaments, four, five, six games a day. Uh-huh. And it was, I think it teaches lessons. Like, you know, teaches lessons. It makes the kids tougher. You right. know, if you're playing outside at the park, mm-hmm. you know, from four to, then the kids are in better shape than they are. And you don't have to worry about load management. Um, but yeah, you wasn't going to sit me down if I was healthy. Okay. That's just me. But when you take it back to the AAU days, are kids playing too many games? May I mean, I don't know if they're playing too many games. I think maybe too many weekends. You know what I mean? I don't think it's too many games in a day. I think instead of playing five weekends in a row, maybe play three. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the the biggest money maker, bad basketball is the biggest money maker. So, you know, exactly. you these local yeah. mom and pop tournaments and people are making money. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I don't, I don't see the the benefit in some of those. Mm-hmm. But as far as you know, playing four or five games a day, I think it teaches some toughness because you're gonna have to gut through being tired. Mm-hmm. Should kids focus on other sports besides basketball? In 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 your estimation? Yeah, I think you should play more than one sport. Mm-hmm. I mean, I got a couple guys on my team that play, that are football players playing basketball. Mm-hmm. But I do believe that if basketball is your main sport. Then during football season, you get an individual work in, you're getting shots up. You know, if you're if football is your main sport during basketball season, then you mm-hmm. get those extra lifts in and, you know, you're getting with your football coach. And I think me and my football coach, Coach Sean Crocker, we work really well together. Okay. And he wants his guys playing basketball. You okay. know, the ones that the ones that can. Oh, yeah. So I do believe it. I do believe it's good to get away from your original sport. And I love the reason why I love about a football player playing basketball is he just wants to win. He don't, he don't. He, competitive spirit. Competitive spirit. He's not worried about a scholarship. He's not worried about his points. He's coming out there because he wants to be part of something that, yeah. that is, you know, that's good. It's, it's, that <laughs> but he wants to be a part of, you know, of a team. Why should I allow my son to play for coach Shawan Robinson? Um, first things first is he's never going to be mistreated. We're going to try to, to, to get the most out of his potential. And hopefully when he's done with me, he's one, had a good basketball experience, and two, he's a better person because of it. Okay. Sounds good to me. Now, this last segment, man, um, this is a new segment that I came up with. It's called Free Game. Uh Uh-huh. Give up the goods. So basically, what I want you to do is I want you to give everybody some free game or give up the goods. It doesn't, it does not have to be about basketball. It could be about life. It could be about anything, but just give us some Shawan Robinson free game. All right. So I, I did come prepared because I've been watching the show. And I did, I did know <laughs> so game. you know. I knew free game was coming. Uh, but mine doesn't have to do with basketball. And my okay. message is to the parents. All right. Every kid ain't a college basketball player. And sometimes basketball careers, you know, whether they in middle school or high school, they are not good experiences because parents put all these pressures on these kids to worry about what's happening three, four years down the line. You know, I wish parents would live in the moment so that the kids could live in the moment. You know, I got guys on my team that are not college basketball players and they need to know that they need to enjoy these four years while, they, while they're playing JV or varsity. Enjoy that time. Cherish the time that you do get to play the game you love because for, for, for everybody at some point it comes to an end. And if you if you're putting all this pressure on this kid to be an NBA player or a college player and they just don't have the physical size, the physical speed or the tools to do it, they're not enjoying the time while they're playing because they're so worried about failing four years from now. So my biggest thing is enjoy the game while you have it. Parents, stop putting all this pressure on these kids to, to get scholarships. You know, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If it's in the kid to work, it's in the kid to work. Now, maybe you can make them work a little bit harder. Work a little bit harder, but you're not going to change how big they are. You're not going to change how fast they are. Just enjoy enjoy the game while you have it. That's my free game for the day. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> now, before you get out of here, man, is there anything you want to share about um, your upcoming schedule? Um, anything regarding Panther Creek? Nah, um, we're, we're in the Christmas tournament in Greensboro, uh, mm-hmm. 26, 27, 28th. But we're trying to make another run at, at a conference championship. Uh, we, we're one and two in the conference right now. Like I said, we lost a couple we might not should have, but I think we got the guys that have, you know, the chance to make a run. We'll, we'll see how it goes the next few weeks. 
All right, man. Well, I- I'm definitely looking forward to you at Panther Creek on the college level. And who knows, maybe the NBA level. But uh, thank you for, uh, you know, coming through again, man. We can uh, we definitely we can get it in again because I'm sure you got a, a a lot more game to, to, to give to the um, to the people. Yeah. Sports talk with player agent three. Thanks for having me.